For decades, militaries have been on a quest for bigger, badder weapons. But every now and then, an idea comes along that's a total game changer. That was the US Navy's dream for the electromagnetic railgun. This wasn't just a small upgrade to existing cannons, which have pretty much hit their limit with gunpowder. This was a complete rethink of how to fire a projectile. The goal was wild. Use pure electromagnetic force to launch a solid metal slug at over 8,000 feet per second. We're talking about hitting a ship from almost 100 miles away with nothing but raw kinetic energy. No explosives needed. Think about that. A weapon that's just as deadly, but with a much safer ammunition supply. No more ships packed to the gills with things that go boom. And boy, did they spend a lot of money on it. The prototype alone cost over $200 million, and by the time they were done, taxpayers had shelled out half a billion dollars over a tough 15-year journey. It was a massive engineering challenge that pushed the limits of what we thought was possible with materials and electricity. So how did it work? In simple terms, the railgun used a crazy amount of electricity, we're talking a sudden massive surge, to create a powerful magnetic field. This field, thanks to a bit of physics called the Lorenz force, gave a seven pound projectile a massive push down a set of rails. It was like squeezing a bar of soak and having it shoot out, but on a cosmic scale. The projectile went from zero to an incredible speed of 8,270 feet per second in less than a blink of an eye. That's more than five times faster than a rifle bullet. At that speed, it could punch through layers of hardened steel like it was cardboard. The Navy even had plans for a super-powered 64 megajoule version that would need enough electricity to power off you city blocks for every single shot. The test looked amazing with a huge flash and a loud crack as the projectile just disappeared into the sky. Plus, not having to store tons of explosives on a ship would have been a huge safety boost. One of the biggest fears on a warship is a secondary explosion, where an enemy hit sets off your own missiles. The railgun would have made that a thing of the past. But like with a lot of big ideas, there were some major headaches. The railgun needed so much power that it would have crippled any current ship's electrical system. It was like trying to jumpstart a skyscraper with a car battery. The rails themselves also wore out super fast from the incredible friction in electrical arcing, which meant they'd need to be replaced all the time. Imagine sanding down steel with pure lightning on every shot. It just wasn't practical for a ship at sea. And the whole thing got so hot, it was always at risk of melting down. So in 2021, the Navy quietly pulled the plug. It was the end of a half billion dollar dream, but not a total waste. The research gave them tons of valuable info on advanced power systems that they can use for other things like lasers. Here come the lasers. So while the railgun was winding down, another cool piece of tech was stepping into the spotlight, laser weapons. On May 16th, 2020, the USS Portland actually shot down a drone with its laser system. It was a huge moment. This thing uses a bunch of laser diodes to create a powerful, invisible beam of light. It's super precise and totally silent. It just melts a target's control surfaces or fries its electronics. No big boom, no mess. It's the ultimate silent takedown. The best part? It's all about instant action. The laser beam travels at the speed of light, so you don't have to worry about leading the moving target. You just point and shoot. And get this, each shot costs about $1 in electricity. Compare that to the million dollar missiles we use now and you can see why the Navy was so interested. It's like having a nearly endless supply of ammo as long as you've got power. This makes it a total game changer for dealing with cheap threats like swarms of drones where firing expensive missiles would be like using a sledgehammer to kill a fly. Of course, it's not perfect. Bad weather like rain or fog can weaken a beam, so it's not an all-weather solution just yet, but for clear days, it's an incredible defensive tool. Don't forget the big bangers. Even with all this futuristic tech, the Navy still relies on good old-fashioned explosives for its biggest punches. You've got the famous Tomahawk missiles, which are basically flying cylinders packed with enough explosives to flatten a city block from over a thousand miles away. 
These things are incredibly smart. They fly super low to the ground, using the terrain to sneak past radar. It's like they're literally hugging the earth, flying through valleys to stay hidden until the last second. They have different versions too, some for hitting buildings, some for ships, and some for hardened bunkers. Then there are the submarines, the quiet hunters of the sea. They carry weapons like the Mark 54 torpedo. This thing weighs over a thousand pounds and is filled with Torpex, an explosive that's 50% stronger than TNT. In the water, that extra power creates a massive shockwave that can snap a ship or submarine in half. It's a submarine's worst nightmare, and it has its own advanced sonar to actively hunt them down. One thing you might not think about is how hard it is to reload these massive weapons out on the open ocean. Imagine trying to thread a needle with a half-ton missile while you're on a rocking boat in the middle of a storm. It's super dangerous. The Navy actually got rid of the cranes they used to use for this because they were too risky in rough seas. Now, it's all done by hand, which takes incredible strength, teamwork, and focus from the sailors. One slip and you've got a multi-million dollar missile swinging around a steel deck. Not good. So how do ships protect themselves from all this stuff? They've got a defense system with a bunch of different layers, like an onion. You have to peel through each one to get to the center. Layer one, the long reach. This often starts with something like the Norwegian Naval Strike Missile. Fired from friendly ships, these can reach out to 345 miles to take out enemy launchers before they even get a chance to fire. They're smart missiles, too. Their advanced seekers can tell the difference between a warship and a fishing boat, and even pick out the most valuable target in a group. Layer 2, the heavy hitter. If threats get closer, ships can use HIMARS rocket systems. These are actually borrowed from the Army and bolted onto the deck. It's a clever move because it gives the Navy a super flexible weapon that can launch all sorts of rockets and missiles to just plaster enemy positions on the coast, supporting troops ashore without needing a whole new system. Layer three, the last stand. If a missile makes it through all that, there's the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, CWIS. This is a last ditch, fully automatic Gatling gun that just sprays a wall of metal at anything that gets too close. It can fire an insane 4,500 rounds a minute. Sailors call it Sea Whiz because of the sound it makes, and it's awesome. It's a completely autonomous robot bodyguard. It finds the target, tracks it, and decides to fire all on its own, because by the time a human could react, it'd be too late. Floating on the biggest ships of all, the aircraft carriers, are the F-35 Lightning II fighter jets. These things are pretty much the top dogs of the sky. Each one costs over $100 million and is basically a flying supercomputer that's invisible to enemy radar. It's not just a plane, it's a data gathering machine. It fuses information from its own powerful sensors with data from other ships, planes, and satellites and puts it all on one simple screen for the pilot. It's like giving the pilot superpowers, allowing them to see the entire battlefield for hundreds of miles. The stealth is the key. It allows the F-35 to get the first shot, which is everything in modern air combat. The enemy never even knows it's there until their world explodes. The crews in red shirts, the ordnance men, had the stressful job of loading these jets with bombs and missiles. A single F-35 can carry 2,000 pound guided bombs inside its body to stay stealthy. The whole loading process is like a delicate dance where being off by an inch could cause a disaster. And the price tag for the whole F-35 program? a mind-blowing $400 billion over its lifetime, making it the most expensive weapon system ever. All this spending and crazy fast tech development brings up some big questions. We're getting new weapons faster than we can figure out how to train people to use them or even decide when it's okay to use them. You have pilots trying to master software that gets updated every few months. It's a constant race to keep up. The firepower on a single aircraft carrier today is more than what entire armies had in the past. 
And that leads to a strange and scary thought. We build these super powerful weapons to keep the peace, but having them might make it more tempting to actually use them in a crisis. Does making war more surgical make it more likely? Even the folks who operate these things, the young sailors and pilots, get a little nervous about how much power they have at their fingertips. Imagine being 22 years old and sitting in front of a console that can launch weapons with that much destructive force. It's a heavy burden to carry, for sure. And it's a question we'll all have to grapple with as technology gets even more powerful. So, what do you think? Anything in this video surprised you? Or maybe you got a question about something we covered? We totally love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you dug learning about these awesome machines, please smash that big thumbs up. It really helps us out. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future vids. Make sure to hit that notification bell too so you're always the first to know when we drop something new. Thanks a bunch for watching everyone, and we'll catch you in the next.